And this is great news for American beer fans in Britain because it means that six American pints are equal to five British ones. You'll be slaughtered before the pub quiz starts. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to size differences. I know, I know, I'm obsessed with size but you know what they say about a man with big feet? He has a huge spine or something with those letters. Anyway, as the old saying goes, everything's bigger in America from its cars to its roads to its yards to its homes to its trees to its phelps to its streets to itself. I mean, could anything be more American than the world's largest tractor? Yes, says the world's largest flag. America even has the world's largest teapot, which is astounding when you consider the historic protocol of its tea parties. But what if I told you that some things are actually smaller on this side of the pond? That despite boasting the world's largest pencil, wind chime, rocking chair, knitting needle, crotchet, hook, pitchfork, golf tee, yardstick, dutch clogs, mailbox, bird cage, wait, that's all in one town? Despite all of that, American life is filled with objects and concepts whose British counterparts are big enough to trigger small spine syndrome. And so today, in what I hope will be the first part in a series, here are six things America does smaller than Britain. There's a misconception that British plugs have three prongs and American plugs have two, but that's not correct. You're, you're thinking of dragons. In the US, it depends on whether you're using a grounded plug or an ungrounded plug, and that's the extent of my circuitry knowledge, after which my wires get a little crossed. What I do know is that British plugs are about twice the size of American plugs. When visiting my homeland a year ago, this really stood out to me. It was like, it was like finally strumming a guitar when you've spent quarantine plucking a uke or other tiny instruments. And it's not just just the plastic coverings that make American plugs smaller. The prongs themselves are simply not as chunky as they are in Britain. Moreover, American wall sockets aren't equipped with on-off switches, so you could argue that even those are smaller. Speaking of arguments, have you ever considered the true spelling of words like colour like Cindy Lauper has? Bring on our next entry. I think it was the Bee Gees who said, talk in everlasting words, but in America that's not possible, and that's because a fair chunk of the American dictionary is shorter than across the pond. Due in part to Noah Webster's spelling reform, America did away with pointless letters in an effort to simplify the language and also to stick it to the Brits. Chief among those words is labour, flavour, neighbour, behaviour, rumour, tumour, humour, harbour, honour, splendour, but apparently not glamour, diarrhoea, fetal, faeces, hope this doesn't put you off your Reese's pieces, paediatric, anemic, orthopaedic, analogue, catalogue, dialogue, monologue, cancelled, travelled, labelled, quarrelled, marvellous, libellous, disoriented, aluminium, airplane, moustache, and 19 1986 American sports film, Best Shot. Somewhere in that list was the word travelled, the perfect segue into this. People ask me all the time what I miss most about Britain and my answer is always the same, my 13th century armour. But after that it has to be comprehensive public transport. I say that like America doesn't have any, but cities of a certain size do normally have at least a bus system. However, there's one thing you'll note about almost all of them, the distinct lack of double-deckers. In Britain, these are a major feature of a town's infrastructure, partly because there's often such a high demand for public transport. In the US, the only double-deckers you're likely to find are the ones that have those people on them who say things like, and over to your left you'll see the original home of YouTube sensation Lawrence Brown. For certain long-distance routes, Megabus will occasionally roll out the double-deckers, but this is literally the only way the company lives up to its name. When it comes to local travel in America, the demand for double-deckers is lacking. Sure, you could put that down to car culture, expenses, and the fact that the upstairs always smells like wee, but it might also be down to this. The United States has a stunning number of people, not to mention a number of stunning people. In real terms, there are approximately five times as many Homo sapiens in America than in Britain. But if you throw another ingredient into the mix, it would still be cannibalism. No, it would paint an entirely different picture. The other ingredient is area. The United States is almost 47 times larger than Britain and must be stopped. But this disparity in population and land differentials can mean only one thing. America has a smaller population density than Britain. And by some way, in the US there are 87 Homo sapiens per every square mile in Britain. This number is 782. It's a crowded place. Of course, the US is also made up of 50 states, themselves akin to a collection of countries or a patchwork quilt. 
but only three of those are more densely populated than Britain, the nations of Massachusetts, Rhode Island and New Jersey. Most, with so much land and so few people, don't come close to Britain. This is especially true of Alaska, where there is one homo sapien for every square mile. That person must be very good at social distancing, which is where our next entry comes in. I've learned many things in 2020. I've learned that 400 square feet isn't the optimum size for a once in a generation pandemic. I've learned that face masks give me a bizarre sense of unrelenting power. And I've learned that Britain and America can't agree on social distancing standards. I should clarify, they, they can't agree on how to measure things in general. In February, I published a video on why Americans don't use the metric system and that video appears to have ended all debate on the matter until the end of time. But US residents have nonetheless been advised to maintain a distance of six feet from each other compared to two meters in Britain. Anyone who knows how to convert meters into feet will know that two meters equates to approximately 6.56168 feet exactly. Ergo, one US social distance is about half a foot shorter than a British social distance. So what does all this mean? In short, <laughs> not a lot. People might be taking to the streets with sticks these days, but not yard sticks. We approximate. They're essentially the same thing. That said, social distancing is not the only thing affected by weights and measures. Great Britain might be unfairly known for its warm beer, but at least you get more bang for your buck. Or should I say quid? You see, a British pint is larger than its American counterpart. To some, that might sound like something that I cooked up after, you know, four pints of Stella, especially since each country defines a pint as one-eighth of a gallon. But here's the catch. Gallons are different too. In the US, a gallon is equal to 3.79 litres. In Britain, it's equal to 4.55 litres. So one eighth of a US gallon gives you a pint of 473 millimetres. A good old British pint clocks in at 568. And this is great news for American beer fans in Britain because it means that six American pints are equal to five British ones. You'll be slaughtered before the pub quiz starts. And speaking of quizzes, here's a piece of trivia. British beer is by no means served water. Warm. In fact, if you order lager, it's as cold as an American beer or Jack at the end of Titanic. Other beers, while not always that cold, are also not warm in the sense that they've been put through a microwave, but rather room temperature or Kate Winslet. Either way, the ship still sinks. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below about other things that are much smaller in America so that I don't have to do as much research next time. For more of my words, be sure to follow me on Twitter at LostInThePondUS and please subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And thank you to my patrons for making this video possible. Become a patron today at patreon.com slash LostInThePond and gain access to my secret live stream. Anyone who pledges $5 or more a month will also gain access to my secret podcast and more. Until next time, goodbye. Goodbye.